We are the members of White Raven Investigations and Paranormal Society, otherwise known as RIPS. On the evening of November 18, 2017, RIPS was graciously afforded the opportunity to conduct a paranormal investigation at the Township of Hamilton Museum in Mays Landing, New Jersey. Originally built in 1903, this one-room schoolhouse was the primary educational facility for the children residing in the Mays Landing area. It continued functioning as a school up until 1992. This building continues home with its legacy of education as the home of the Township of Hamilton Historical Society. Today, this landmark building houses a research and reference center, as well as a museum exhibiting a fascinating collection of artifacts, documents, and displays focusing on the history of the township. Every investigation that we conduct begins with the preparation and deployment of the gear that we will be using. RIPS uses a wide range of equipment to capture and record events which will later be processed and reviewed. Some of our equipment is digital, such as digital voice recorders, digital camcorders, a DVR system which is similar to a video security system, and other handheld devices. We also employ older analog equipment such as cassette recorders and a mini DV camcorder. All of our cameras, both digital and analog, are able to record using infrared light allowing them to see in total darkness. While the tech crew sets about deploying the equipment, other members of the team conduct a walk through the location to identify conditions or objects that may have an effect on the investigation. For example, knowing the locations of air vents, electronic motors, and computers will help us eliminate false readings. Here, Bob is conducting an electromagnetic field, or EMF, sweep of the room to obtain a baseline reading. During the actual investigation, any EMF readings that are significantly higher than the baseline in that particular area may indicate paranormal activity. A safety check of the area is a very important part of the walkthrough as well. Trip hazards, uneven floors, and locations of stairs are identified. Remember, most of the investigation is conducted in the dark. The first pieces of equipment we deploy during setup are the audio recorders. We do this because we have found that on many investigations we are able to capture voices while we are placing the equipment. One theory is that spirits may be curious about our presence or, perhaps, they're happy to see us, such as this voice that was captured during setup. The next voice was again captured during setup. If you listen closely, you will hear what sounds to be a child humming, which is fitting considering the building was a school for so many years. This device is known as the Periscope. The Periscope was designed and built for paranormal investigations. The device reacts to tribal electric fields a form of static electricity. One common theory among paranormal investigators is that spirits are comprised of energy which can be measured. Some theorize this energy is triboelectric, which can be detected by the periscope. If the periscope does indeed detect triboelectric fields, it will illuminate along with an alert sound. We've used the periscope on numerous investigations. Periscope activations are rare. In fact, we can recall only one investigation where the device activated more than twice. As you will see, this investigation was a record breaker. Can you show us how to do that again? Because we're not sure how you're able to. Just like that. That's pretty good. Can they push it? Can you move it? You're trying, aren't you? What's the EMF? There you go. I think that's outstanding that you can do that. Things do go bump in the night, and most noises heard during an investigation have simple and very likely causes. Houses do settle, furniture does creak, 
and air and water pipes do cause bangs. Having someone familiar with the building being investigated is invaluable as that person is able to help distinguish a normal noise from one that may be paranormal. Sounds that have no identifiable source may be what are referred to as phantom sounds. Some such noises are heard as they happen, and some are only found while reviewing the recordings. While we were conducting an EVP session on the reference and research side of the building, Kelly wore a pair of headphones connected to her digital recorder, allowing her to hear what was being captured. What she heard was the sound of someone slowly walking across the wooden floor. None of us were moving, and while the sounds are clear on the recordings, the rest of us did not hear them at the time. Okay. No one's moving and I'm hearing the floor creaking. No, it's the floor. Like someone's walking. At this time, we'd like to introduce you to our canine core. This is Trigger. Trigger is a purpose-built paranormal tool with a REM device inside. The REM antenna runs from Trigger's nose to the base of his tail, which radiates a very weak bubble of energy. Trigger will activate if that bubble is interrupted, such as by touch. Whatever interrupts that bubble must be within a half an inch or so of Trigger to cause the activation. The idea of building a REM inside a toy dog is the hope that a spirit will be more comfortable interacting with a familiar object as opposed to an unfamiliar and perhaps intimidating electronic device. It is not often we experience trigger activating on an investigation. However, we have had investigations where trigger has been quite active. This was one of those nights. Right, you see the dog on the floor? Can you pet his back? Is that trigger? Yes, that's trigger. You see that, Maury? Trigger's on the floor as I hear now. I've never seen this happen. No. Mm -mm. By this time, we were beginning to wonder if we were interacting with Mr. Edmund Gaskill. When we first entered the building, Kelly immediately felt uneasy near Mr. Gaskill's large frame photograph. While conducting the baseline sweep, both Kelly and Bob noted high EMF readings surrounding the photo. The readings lowered when the meter was moved behind the image or to either side of the frame. Mari then informed us that the photo was a very recent donation to the museum and was brought into the building within the past few days. All right, can you light up that little screen there if you're willing to play along with, with 20 questions? All right, thank you. Good, solid, it's rolling ahead there. Hey, right. if the answer is yes, light up the thing that you're working on there. If the answer to my question is no, go over and touch trigger on the back. Is this Edmund that we're talking to? Okay, thank you for lighting that up. Keep going. To rule out false positive readings, we relocated the devices. That thing's never going off more than twice in an investigation. Both 
You see how strong those hits are, too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're lasting. Just reach over and touch the dog. If you don't like them, knock them over. Repeatedly asking Edmund, or whomever else may be present, to activate trigger became a bit frustrating. So, we resorted to bribery. All right. Here's a nickel. I'll leave it right here for you. It's a lot of money back in your day. You gotta have that nickel if you touch the dog. While at first it didn't appear that the bribe had worked, we did capture the CVP that suggests Mr. Gaskill was indeed interested in cashing in. Because both trigger and the periscope activity seemed to come to an end, we decided it would be a good time to take a short break, regroup, and move on to the next phase of the investigation. It would seem that Mr. Gaskell didn't agree. Within a moment or two of us shutting off the camcorder and getting back on our feet, Trigger began to activate, persistently. You want the nickel back? Yes. Okay. Yeah, both of them are going. Hey, here's, here's your nickel. Came up from a seven oh eight. I'm not disappointed we're not at the library. This is a REM pod. As with the device embedded in Trigger's back, the REM pod emits a weak bubble of energy and will activate when that bubble is broken. Whatever activates the REM pod must touch or be within a half an inch or so of the device. Want the REM pod? Okay. Yeah. Only me grabbing the rempod. That's new toy. New toy. Okay, now it didn't hurt touching trigger. It won't hurt touching the rempod. Just touch the antenna, the silver silver rod on it. We use audio and video recorders to attempt to capture voices. Some are disembodied voices, some are EVPs. EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomenon. The difference between a disembodied voice and an EVP is you can hear a disembodied voice while you were there. You hear it live, you hear it with your own ears. An EVP is something that we don't hear at the time but we do hear later during review. Like the run pod. We got it. Okay, we'll get rid of that. Now do me a favor. Okay. In that recorder, tell us why you don't like the run pod. Does the run pod hurt? They they quit. On both devices. Okay. Let go trigger for a second. Okay, let it go for more than a second. Let me finish what I was going to say. By the way, if that were. If that were natural 
causes both of those, the REM pod and the dog, were to go on. Yeah. Admit, give me a chance to talk here, will you, pal? In that recorder, tell us why you don't like the REM pod. In that recorder, tell us why you don't like the REM pod. This was not the first time we've captured a voice that indicated that the REM pod caused discomfort. While conducting an investigation at the Cape May Fire Department Museum, the REM pod activated once. We encouraged the spirit to activate the device again to no avail. In the following EVP, you will hear Eileen telling the spirit that the device will not hurt. And you will also hear the surprising response. It didn't hurt the last time. It didn't hurt last time. Okay, thank you. If you want us to... <laughs> He's had enough of you. <laughs> this might be the first time he's able, been able to communicate, too. Mm -hmm. If you want us to turn off the REM pod, touch the dog, and the periscope again at the, at the same time. Just like that. Thank you. All right, we're going to turn it off. It's going to make a little noise. Bob's going to turn it off. I will turn this car around and go home. Yeah. yeah, okay, if you don't let go of the dog, we're going to put the REM pod back. In this audio clip, you will hear Trigger and the Periscope activate. We were amused at how active both devices were being, but what we didn't hear at the time was this voice that sounds to be a young child. Listen closely as the voice is heard during the device is activated. I never thought you would say stop. <laughs> Yeah, we're just going to move these devices a little bit. Does it feel colder there, Bob? Oh man, touch the belly, that's real loud. Okay, so we, we got the REM pod out of your way. Unbelievable. What in the world is going on? This is Alright, real quick, are you webbing? So you are Edmund. Is this your picture right here? Is this your picture? It is. Okay. Is your brother's picture somewhere in here?
Okay, very good. I'm going to point. Is your brother's picture up there on the wall? No. Or yes. All right, one more time. Yes or no? Just, just one of the devices. Dog is yes. Screen is no. Is that your brother's picture up there? Is it your brother-in-law? Oh my God. Evan, you're about the best at this I've ever seen. After confusing Evan's brother-in-law for his brother, the activity came to a grinding halt. The devices, which had been activating steadily, stopped. After several minutes of inactivity, we finally got things back on track. Evan, if you're still here, touch the dog. One test to determine if a haunting is intelligent or residual is to ask the spirits to let us know if they are able to give us a very relevant reply. Often, we will ask a spirit to say our names or to let us know how many of us they are able to see. Since we were, after all, in a schoolhouse, we opted for a math quiz. We got four people over there, three people over here. So you touch triggers back as many times as people are here, not including yourself or the people like you. And it's one. Try to do as quickly as you can because that's two. So I'm running out of tape here already. That's three. Four. Yeah, he flipped before. Two. Okay, we'll go with three. All right, so that's three. Four. That's five. More than five, keep going. Six. Are there any more than six? And that's seven. Thank you. Right, stop touching triggers so we, uh, we know that you're done counting. There's eight, maybe he's going to clue himself. When the activity again slowed to a crawl, we decided it was a good time to take that break we weren't able to take before. This gave us a chance to change tapes, have a quick snack, and get a breath of fresh air. We decided we would then work on the exhibit side of the building. So we're going to reset a little bit here. One more time. My name is John. Kelly. Kelly. Maury. Bob. No, that didn't go off. That's it went two minutes. Part of the reason why paranormal investigations are conducted at night is to cut down on audio contamination. Sounds of people talking outside, traffic, and other noises make it difficult to identify EVPs during a review. Unfortunately, audio contamination is never completely avoidable. Do wild car radios annoy you? I don't blame you, they annoy me too. Activity on the exhibit side of the building seemed to be slow. Kelly pointed out that earlier we didn't even have a chance to turn the lights off before the activity began. In fact, we didn't turn the lights off until after our first break. 
This led me to ask the most obvious question. The response was captured on every recorder we had deployed. Yeah, I mean, you're not afraid of the dark, are you? Put that off to my right. Did it just say no? Yeah, I mean, you're not afraid of the dark, are you? Put that off to my right. Did it just say no? Yeah, I mean, you're not afraid of the dark, are you? Put that off to my right. Did it just say no? Was that? Did you just hear a groan? I think I'm getting what sounds like whispers, but it's very hard to hear over the heat. What was that? Did you just hear a groan? I think I'm getting what sounds like whispers, but it's very hard to hear over the heat. Is it doing anything down there? Nothing yet. Is it doing anything down there? Nothing yet. It seemed that since we moved Trigger to the exhibit side of the building, he wasn't getting any attention. I made a point of mentioning that Trigger was being neglected, and a moment later, we all heard this. The voice was also captured on every recorder. What the hell was that? I just heard that. Someone told me this came in. What the hell was that? I just heard that. Someone told me this came in. Again, activity slowed and we decided it was time for another break. We decided that we would go back to the research and reference section of the building where we experienced so much activity earlier. We added a K2 meter to the mix to help document electromagnetic energy. The K2 meter detects EMF and a graduated set of lights indicates the strength of the detected field. The next EVP you hear was captured when Bob was moving the REM pod. The REM pod activated when Bob picked it up, which was normal and expected. What was not expected was the voice that can be heard while the device was sounding. What it says may be a bit unsettling to some. During the CVP session, a soft knock was heard by all of us, and it was also captured on several recorders. It seemed the origin was a binder above where Kelly was seated. When she later stood and checked the binder, she found it contained cemetery records. Did you hear that? Yeah, where was that? Did you hear that? Yeah, where was that? During a review, we are often surprised at what we find, and this was no exception. As most of the group opted to step outside for a few moments, Bob and I stayed behind to continue an EVP session. You will hear the others putting on their jackets and heading for the door, and you will hear Bob and I on the research and reference side of the building. You will also hear one of the loudest and clearest EVPs Rips has ever captured. It was so loud, in fact, that when I was reviewing the first recorder, I ignored it, believing it had to be someone in the group. It wasn't until I reviewed the next recorder that I realized this voice didn't come from any of us. Touch it again. Come on, show me what you're going to do.
Touch it again. Come on, show me what you can do. So we've completed our investigation of the Township of Hamilton Historical Society Museum. Uh, we'd like to wrap up by sharing with you our thoughts and impressions. Kelly? I was pleasantly surprised at how much activity there was in such a small area and how everything seemed to be focused around the picture of Edmund Gaskell. Any thoughts? Impressions? One impression that I really got out of was the children, the, the schoolhouse part of it, where you were actually able to see an old, a, a dress from the era, from the early 1900s, and also some of the books that the kids used during that time and how they learned their math, learned English. And even though we didn't hear it, we did pick up some children's voices later on listening to the EVPs afterwards. Myself, I did expect that we were going to get activity considering the age of the building, what it was used for, and so many historical artifacts. As you know, there are theories that there can be attachments to artifacts. Uh, so I was really not surprised by getting some activity, but I am surprised at how much we did get. Well, it was also a first for us having all the devices activated you know, one after the other and non-stop for the, before we even started the investigation, just yeah. setting up the first head activations. I can't remember a time where we've had the periscope back to the board a couple of times during an investigation and that night. Yeah, the periscope was going really, really active. And we've never had trigger activated that strong, that steadily, and that frequently. And it almost seemed like you would ask a question and devices would activate in response to the question that you asked. Um, and it seemed strange that myself or Eileen would ask the question and we wouldn't get a response. Um, whatever, whoever you were communicating with seemed to prefer you Talk over me and anybody else. And uh, as Kelly and I were talking about before, it did seem to center upon Edwin Gasco, uh, especially regarding the, uh, the image that was put in there. Uh, you had readings on it when you first walked in, and um, it, it really did seem as if uh, we may have been actually talking to Edwin Gasco. And I believe we were told that painting was pretty recent. Yeah, it was like added like a week before. Yeah, it's a new edition. New edition. But it's also funny how we took the picture off the outside wall and moved it in where there was no electrical outlets. And we still got readings still on still got readings and, and activity surrounding it. And of course we all heard audible voices. Yes. Um, and then of course we picked up many more EVPs that we didn't hear at the time. Yeah. It was a very interesting night. It was very interesting. And uh, just on a closing note, I'd like to invite anybody that happens to be in the Township of Hamilton area uh, or comes to this way on vacation or a stop through on the way to the shore, please stop by and visit this museum. It's a gem and you can learn a lot from it and the people there are have very a, knowledgeable. Yeah, they have a lot to share with people. Uh, we would encourage everybody to, to stop by and visit them. And if you do a search engine of the Township of Hamilton Historic Society Museum. You'll find your site and find a way to come visit. Any other thoughts? We'd like to thank Mari and, and the entire staff. Everyone that was there. Uh, it was a great night. And we even had a new member that's a complete skeptic, which was yes, a great Bob. thing to have. He wasn't up to this point able to debunk anything that happened that night. 
So that was also pretty interesting. Again, thank you, and be sure to visit the museum.